Namaste. Welcome to another episode, the 31st episode of Uladru Narpadu. So, this is a tough one. <laughs> Let's just jump right into the verse. When the reality surges forth and appears as I, I, for the jnani who enjoys the bliss of self, which has arisen by destroying the individual self, the ego, what single thing exists to do? He does not know anything other than self, which shines as the one reality. Who can conceive what his state is? This is really a tough one. <laughs> I've been thinking over it for a long time. How to express? Because as Kabir said, in enlightenment, I'm paraphrasing, in enlightenment, the drop merges into the ocean. But the ocean also merges into the drop. This is an inconceivable state. It boggles the mind. Uh, the poor mind <laughs> trying to wrap itself around this uh, paradoxical, inconceivable state. So let's see, how can I express? Well, there is two ways that I can express it. As the drop, the individual, who becomes enlightened, or as the ocean, as the self. Uh, so let's start with the, the drop, <laughs> from the point of view of the drop. I'm going to read a verse from Upadesha Undiyar, which is referenced in the Ladunarpadu, verse 15. For the great yogi who is established as the reality due to the death of the mind form, there is not any action to do because he has attained his nature, his natural state of self-abidance. And there's a note by Sadhu Om. The sense of doership, the feeling I am doing this action, can exist only so long as the mind, whose form is the feeling, I am this, or I am that, exists. Therefore, when the mind is destroyed, the sense of doership is also destroyed. Hence, the yogi whose mind is dead, and who thereby abides as self, the reality cannot be the doer of any action. Whatever action he may appear to do exists only in the outlook of those who mistake him to be the body, which does the action. <laughs> so, from your point of view, I am this body and this mind, and I'm talking to you on the video. <laughs> So let's start there, huh? because that's already your point of view, that I'm doing this. Well, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm just sitting here enjoying this incredible beauty. Huh? There's a, a Zen koan, not koan, haiku, that this very body, the Buddha, this very world, the lotus paradise. What does that mean? It means enlightenment is bliss, man. <laughs> enlightenment is fabulous. It's ecstasy. So, an enlightened person feels there's nothing for me to do. Nothing for me to strive for. Nothing more to learn, to understand, or to realize. Everything is here. 
Everything is as it is. And as it is, it's perfect. It's beautiful. So, the enlightened person, uh, the drop who merges with the ocean, doesn't feel any lack, doesn't feel any desire. He doesn't feel that anything is missing or wrong. Uh, even the, the parts of the world that are unsavory or in darkness, uh, he feels, well, this is necessary. Otherwise, there would be no incentive to attain self-realization. So the person who reaches enlightenment feels, uh, other than just maintain this body that I've been given, and if anybody needs some help to understand all this, I'm very happy to offer it. But otherwise, there's nothing to do. This is renunciation. This is retirement. Sannyas. Huh? It doesn't mean that you go through some ceremony and you change the color of your cloth and then you walk around with a big stick and think that you're superior to everybody. <laughs> no, it, it just means that you realize that there is nothing but the self. And I am that. So even though there is still a sense of I am, that is experienced as I, I. See, this is very hard to explain. <laughs> even for someone like me who for many years has studied communication and so on, it's, it's really hard. So, we're dealing with absolutes. The absolute is the irreducible, indivisible, always awakened mm, ocean of being and non-dual awareness. That is everything. Huh? Even though forms may appear in that ocean, just like foam on the waves when they break at the shore, they dissipate very quickly. So what is there to be attached to? Or what is there to judge and say, this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad? Only in terms of purpose. You can say, if you want to become enlightened, then you should do this and you should not do that. Yam niyam. You can say like that. But that has no absolute value. That can change. It can be different for different individuals. It can be different at different stages of the path. It's all just impermanent. It's all just bubbles in the waves. So, nevertheless, it's beautiful. Why is it beautiful? I have a friend. And my friend is very powerful. And very rich. And anything that I need or anything that I want, he can very easily provide or deliver it. And of course, the best thing about having this friend is our relationship, our wonderful, sweet, affectionate relationship. He is very amiable, and very understanding, and very kind by nature. So he doesn't make any rules. He doesn't say, you can't do this, you can't do that. There's no restrictions on my individuality. I can be as I am, and that's fine. So this is a wonderful relationship. And of course, I'm talking about my relationship with the self, with Brahman. Now, let's look at it from the other side. <laughs> from the other side, I am pure awareness, non-dual, totally subjective, 
indivisible, always awake. I have everything. Indeed, I am everything. I create this world as a dream. When I want entertainment, it's just a play. Don't be attached to it. It's like, I want to see myself. I want to understand what I am. So I make a bunch of mirrors, the individual beings who reflect my beingness in many different ways. Now, in the ocean, near the surface, it's very light and you can see everything. And the beings that are near the surface of the ocean are the more enlightened beings and they see things as it is. They reflect the reality. They're awake. They're enlightened. But the, the ocean also, as it gets deeper and deeper, becomes murky and dark. And in the bottom, there's mud. Huh? So the beings who are unaware, unenlightened, sink down further and further. And maybe they even go into the mud and they lose self-consciousness entirely. Blinded by the murk and the darkness at the bottom. What to do? They have chosen that kind of existence by their actions. So they are not reflecting uh, an accurate view of what I am. So I don't give them much attention. Uh, I simply maintain them. That's my duty. But they're there by choice, by their previous actions and their karma. So each and every individual being is simply a reflection of my being, my absolute being. And within that being and that awareness, they create the world, each one for himself, the way he sees it. So the body, the senses, the mind, the world, the ego, all these are illusion. They're simply a reflection of my absolute being. So know this to be true. There is nowhere to go, nothing to do. Uh, you are already enlightened. You are already self-realized because you are aware of yourself. Is it not? As soon as someone says, I am, they are saying, I am one with the infinite. I am consciousness. I am being. So what is this uh, feeling of lack, of something missing, of something incomplete? It is only the hunger to be filled with my completeness. And as soon as you come into relationship with me and begin to reflect me, the more accurately and fully you reflect my being, the more you approach perfection. Your perfection as an individual and as abstract beingness. Uh, that every being is a reflection of God. As above, so below. Well, these ancient truths are there in the tradition, the ancient uh, scriptures, the teachings of the sages and so on. They're there in the world. You can find them. And by a very small effort, uh, in a comparatively short amount of time, you can realize them for yourself. So I have made this world actually completely perfect. Now it's up to you to realize it. See? So the self, the absolute, Brahman, 
is actually very friendly, very helpful and supportive. We are the ones who turn away from him, trying to have our own individual world and self. And so he gives it. But because our knowledge is incomplete, we make it hell. It's imperfect. It's unsatisfying. It's incomplete. The only thing we need to do to make it complete is to turn and realize the self. Om Tatsa. Om Harihi Om.